Hey, what's up, you guys? This is Ty from Table Flip Foundry. Today, we're going to talk about how to edit an STL file so that it can be object swapped in Lightsheet. Sometimes when you're doing uh, pre-supports or supports for yourself, or if you're an artist, you're doing supports for your client or your customers, you may have either a variation or an edit that needs to take place after you've printed the file. So, for example, we're looking at an arm and the key is slightly too big. And so we printed it, we tried to put it together, we realized too late that it didn't quite fit together and we're gonna have to shrink this key a little bit. Well, we don't wanna re-support this entire file. You can see it's very complex. We've done a lot of work to get it printable. So what Lychee does is it has an option in the uh, layout tab where you can, we can actually see it here, where you can load in a model like this and you can use the object editor to change out that model for a different model. And what that'll do is that'll leave your supports in place. So let's go ahead and throw some, just some temporary supports on this model that we're working on here. Just something to show us what's going on. Okay, so here we have, we don't need these, that's fine. Um, supports on a model. Now let's go and take a look at editing the file in Blender so that we can swap out this one with the smaller key. So here's the here's the file in Blender and there are a few things we need to keep in mind. So I know when you go in to edit a file, it might you might be inclined to move it or rotate it, maybe scale it, change its location, any of those things that might make it easier for you to work on. But it's really important to understand that when we load that STL, that STL carries a lot of information with it. So it carries the origin, it carries the scale, it carries the position, and it carries the rotation or orientation, right? And if we make any changes to any of those elements in the file, we will no longer be able to swap the object out because the new object won't be in the same position and location as the last object. We cannot change the size of the object because then the supports won't line up. So when we're making these edits, it's very important to remember, do not change anything else about the file. Leave the file in place, make the edits, export the file exactly as is, and then we'll be able to swap it out easily. So today we're going to take a look at this key. I'm going to show you a real quick method that, that I've kind of worked out as far as shrinking this key down a little bit, even post-process. So if you don't have the, you remesh the file and you don't have the original file or whatever the case is, we can actually still edit the STL, which is kind of the hardest way to do it, but I've kind of come up with a fast way. So we're going to go into edit mode. I'm going to continue with this as if you kind of understand Blender. I will tell you kind of what commands and what keystrokes I'm using, but you're going to have to have a basic knowledge of Blender to do this method. But uh, we're going to, we, we've got three different viewing modes here. It's vertices, edges, and faces. We're going to go into the faces mode and we're gonna come down to our object and we're gonna select one of these faces. Now, if I hold control, it will pick the shortest path when I click another face. So it'll automatically select everything in between and pick the shortest path available. So I'm gonna kind of work my way around here and pick the shortest path. Now this path doesn't quite look the way I would want it. So I'm gonna pick a different one here. I'm just gonna pick a different spot and a different spot. And I'm gonna work my way around this, this object. Now I'm not gonna take a whole lot of time here in the video to make this super clean. You can choose a, a cleaner path if you want, but for our purposes, we're just going to, oh, there we go, get a hold of our camera. We are just going to go ahead and, and let it select now. It's important that I finish the path. So my, my final path meets up with the original. So now I have a perfect loop. It goes all the way around the key that, that we're looking for. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna use the H key for hide and I'm gonna hide that loop. What's gonna happen is you're gonna be able to kind of see the inside of the model through the loop. But more specifically, what this does is this allows us to select only the key using the L key. So L stands for linked. So you'll notice when I click the L key, it only selected the key. If I were to do it down here, let's say I clicked L on the chain, it's gonna select the whole arm. That's because all of the elements of that object are linked together. But by hiding that loop, we've isolated 
the key from the rest of the model. And from here, I'm just gonna scale this key down a bit. I'm gonna exaggerate it here for you guys. You wouldn't wanna scale it this much, but I'm gonna exaggerate it here. Um, all right, so I've got the key scaled down and now I'm gonna hit Alt H to unhide those, those ones we hit earlier. Now you'll notice they sort of stretched out and filled in the gap. This has provided us a modified file with a smaller key. Now what we're going to do is export this file and we're gonna make sure we hit selection only. We're gonna call this arm2 underscore fixed. Perfect, all right. We didn't change the orientation, we didn't change the location, we didn't change the size, and we didn't change the origin. These are all very important factors. So when we load this new STL file in, so we've got Leachy Slicer, we're going to load in this new object but keep the supports in place. So here I'm going to select fixed, the arm fixed. And we'll notice when we look at these supports, the location of these supports hasn't changed at all. The file has been swapped perfectly. What I'll do is let me bring in this other arm, the original arm, so we can kind of compare. All right, so here's the original arm. And you can see we've actually modified the file, but the supports haven't changed at all. So this just saved me potentially two or three hours of work in order to fix this key because I understood all of the elements that are taking place when modifying the file. So hopefully this is helpful to you. This is a very specific use case, but, um, but if you need it, now you know, and I hope that helps. Thank you so much for watching, guys. We'll see you soon.